All right, so we've been talking about all these scientific notation. We've talked about sig figs, and all of those are going to be important. But if I have something that's really, really big or something that's really, really small, instead of saying, oh, I ran 20,000 inches today, maybe I'd rather just put that in miles, right? So we have different units that are used to describe things that are small and that are big as well. If I'm measuring maybe the size of my hand, maybe I'll use inches, okay? If I'm measuring my height, I would use feet. If I'm measuring the height of a building, maybe I'm gonna use yards, okay? We use the US customary here in the United States, so everything is in miles or miles per hour. Everywhere else, use the metric system. Okay, which would be kilometers, centimeters, meters, okay? So for today, you guys, do you remember this? The stair step that King Henry died from drinking chocolate milk from sixth grade? Maybe. All right, so our base unit is going to be, let's say, one. We'll start out easy. If I have one gram... Actually, let's do meters, it's easier. You guys can picture meters in your head. I have one meter stick. How many centimeters is that? A hundred, good. How do you know there's a hundred centimeters in one meter? You know that there's a hundred years in one century, right? or a centipede has a hundred legs, okay? So when we use the staircase, if we're going to the right, we're gonna move the decimal to the right, one place. So this has one decimal point, and then when I go to deci, I have 10 decimeters and one meter. I have 100 centimeters and one meter. I have 1,000 millimeters and one meter, okay? If I go up the staircase from my base unit though, so here's my base unit again, okay? And that could be meters, liters, or grams. If I go up to a kilometer, do I have a thousand kilometers in one meter? No. So when I went down the staircase, I moved the decimal to the right. If I go up the staircase, I'm actually gonna move it to the left, okay? So rather than it being a thousand kilometers, I move it to the left one place. So I have 0.1 deca, 0.01 hectometer, and then 0.001 kilometer, okay? So you guys learned this metric staircase system back when you guys were sixth grade, I think. Yesterday's group told me they were like, oh yeah, I kind of remember it, but like that was during a day where I was just like, chill. And I like slid down their seats, they're like, I should just chill day. So like, what? They're like, yeah, I saw it, don't really remember it. So if we go up, we're gonna move it to the left. Now you don't necessarily have to use a staircase method. You can just set up a dimensional analysis problem. That's probably the easy to do. Some people like the staircase method, some people don't, okay? So if I have a thousand milligrams, so I start out at a thousand down here, and I'm gonna go up the staircase. Remember, I move the decimal point to the left one. So I start with a thousand, that means I have a hundred, ten, one gram. If I start with one liter, go back down, move the decimal to the right. How many milliliters is that? A thousand, right? Milli is a thousand. Okay, what about if I do 160 centimeters? Move the decimal to the right one. How many millimeters would that be? Add a zero, 1,600 millimeters, okay? If I start out at 14 kilometers, I'm gonna go to the right to get down to my base unit, which is gonna be meters. So how many hectometers would that be? 140, add a zero, 1,400 decameters, and then 14,000 meters. 
So when I said you can do this a different way, what I mean is by if I take 14 kilometers, I can set up a dimensional analysis problem. In one kilometer, how many meters would there be? Yeah, a thousand, good. Oops. Okay. Do you see how I have kilometers on top, kilometers on bottom, now those units cancel? Okay, well what's 14 times a thousand? 14,000, right? I get the same answer. So whether you like this staircase or if you hate the staircase, it does not matter, it's totally up to you. Some people prefer to do it that way, others prefer to do dimensional analysis. I will say moving forward, dimensional analysis is gonna be your best friend, okay? Let's do this one, the 250 meters. If I set this up as a dimensional analysis problem, I need meters to go to kilometers. If I put meters on top, will that cancel out? No, so I can't have kilometers up top. I need kilometers down, or meters down bottom, and I want kilometers up top, right? So that my meters and meters are gonna cancel. Now the question is, do I have one kilometer is how many meters? A thousand, good. Now my meters are gonna cancel. Okay. Who can do that for me? What is 250 divided by a thousand? Say it again. Four? four? Point. You're right, it's one fourth, so 0.25, right, kilometers. Always make sure you're including units. Units give things meaning. It's important, okay? So always ask yourself, okay, well, if I calculate this and I said 250 meters was 25,000 kilometers, that maybe shouldn't make sense to you because you know kilometers are bigger, right? You know miles are bigger than feet. So if the final number that you get does not make sense, you need to ask yourself, oh, does that make sense? So like, ask yourself, which is bigger, 63 centimeters or six meters? You guys know meters are bigger, right? Grams versus milligrams, which is bigger? Grams are gonna be bigger, right? Milliliters versus liters. Liters are definitely bigger. But if you take a look, this one's a little tricky. To convert milliliters to liters, if I divide that by 1,000, that gives me 1 1.5. Hey, this one's equal, okay? And then centi versus deci. Deci is gonna be bigger if I use my staircase, right? There's my deci, but it is only bigger by one move of the decimal point. So if I move the decimal point one place, hey, guess what, that one's also equal. So I want you guys to start conceptualizing and saying, okay, well, my final answer that I get, is it making sense or not? And we're going to do practice problems to try to like help you out with that, okay? Some of these conversions you already know. So for example, one foot has how many inches? 12. One meter has how many centimeters? 100. Anybody know how many ounces are in a pound? 16. Good. One minute is how many seconds? 60. One hour is how many minutes? Okay, one day? Oh, that's a lot. Oh my gosh, okay. Let's see if we can figure this out. Ooh, I don't know, let's see. All right, so one day, if I wanna get rid of days, would I put days on top or days on the bottom to cancel out? On the bottom, okay. So in one day, how many hours is that? Okay, so I'm 224 hours, right? So I'm in 24, but I want second. So instead of hours, I'm gonna get rid of the hours. I want seconds. If I put hours on the bottom, will that get rid of the unit hours? Yeah. What should I put on top then? Minutes, right? Because I maybe don't know exactly how many seconds are in an hour, but I know that there's 60 minutes. Okay, I'm still not quite done though. Minutes are gonna go on the bottom. What's gonna go up top? Seconds. Okay, so one minute has how many seconds? 
60. Hey, look, my minutes canceled out. OK, now how do I solve this? These are all fractions. So I'm going to multiply. I'm going to put it in my parentheses. I'm going to multiply everything on top. And then I'm going to hit divide, parentheses, everything on the bottom multiplied. OK? It's really important that you guys start using parentheses. Okay. Some of these are going to be nice and easy. Like on this one, you can see on the bottom, it's 1 times 1 times 1. Dude, easy peasy. Okay. So multiplying across the top, 24 times 60 times 60 divided by 1 times 1 times 1. What do you get? Who's got a calculator? 86,400. Who guessed that? Somebody guessed that? Did you get that right? Nice. All right, now how many sig figs is that two? That's three sig figs. Uh-oh. I was given only one day, though. Uh-oh. All right. You guys give me that answer in one sig fig. Yes, good. 90,000 seconds. Okay, because this will round up. Okay, good. All right, so that's dimensional analysis in a nutshell, OK? So first practice, if I take a look, a contractor is measuring a doorway to be 46 inches. How many feet is that? I want to get rid of inches. So do I put it on the top or on the bottom? Bottom. OK, I have how many inches in a foot? 12, OK? Inches cancel. So 46 times 1, so multiply the top. Parentheses divided by the bottom multiplied. Well, what is 46 divided by 12? Who's got a calculator? Three point eight three repeating feet, though, right? All right. Well, my initial unit is two sig figs, so let's go ahead and let's say this is just three point eight feet. Boom. So do you see how I'm going to cancel out? Okay. So for example, if I was doing this one, I'm 29 years old. If I said, well, how many hours is that? Well, let's convert to what we know. Years is what? Yeah, that's 365 days is one year. OK, years are gone now. But I want to know hours. Where should I put the days now to cancel out days? In the bottom. Let's try to get days to hours. One day has how many hours? Could I have said 2 is 48? Oh, it's not wrong. Technically, it's the exact same ratio. So it doesn't necessarily matter. But obviously, if you keep things to ones in the denominator, that makes life easier. That's up to you, though. OK? All right, so then I would multiply that. Parentheses, 29 times 365 times 24 divided by 1 times 1. Again, using parentheses, how many hours is that? Who's got it? 29 times 365 times 24. Uh, 254,040. Whew, yeah, oh my gosh. I'm ancient, guys. I'm ancient. But look how cool I am. Yes. OK? All right, so each one of these, we are setting up and trying to cancel out. So there's a lot of unit conversion factors that you guys already know that you use in daily life. Like the one foot is 12 inches, or one yard is three feet. These are all ones that you know. Obviously, I will give you guys some. Like you might know that there's four quarts in a gallon, but you might not. Okay, it's totally up to you. Um, but I'll try to make sure that you guys are aware of those ones and you have them when needing to do calculations. Okay? So when we're using those conversion factors, you want to make sure you're starting with what you're given. So I started with 29 years. And then I wanted to get to hours. Well, I want to make a road map. I don't know years to hours right away. But I know years to days and then days to hours, OK? So you want to consider where you're starting, where you're ending, and then maybe what conversion factors need to go in the middle.
okay? So you wanna make sure each time, you know how I was asking you, well, does that cancel out, okay? Do you see how here feet and feet are gonna cancel? So then my units are inches per miles, okay? Or on the next one, I have seconds and seconds. The seconds are gonna cancel, okay? Sometimes we're given things as I'm driving in miles per hour. When it says per, that means fraction. So it's a certain number of miles I'm covering, my 60 miles in my one hour, right? So those are what those units are kind of symbolizing with. If I am looking to go from inches to feet, if I start with say five inches, to get rid of inches, do I want inches on the bottom or inches on the top? Bottom, right? So I would use it in this form. If I say I have 30 minutes and I want to get rid of the minutes, would I put minutes on top or minutes on the bottom? On the bottom, right? So as you're going, you need to make sure that you're canceling out, making sure that the yards is on top. I got to get rid of yards on the bottom. I don't want to choose it that way. Because otherwise, it's yards times yards. It's yards squared. OK? All right, so if I was to do additional problems again, there's just more practice on, this, on the actual document. If you go onto it, it'll walk you through again. There's 16 quarts, OK? So four quarts per one gallon. I want to make sure that the quarts are canceling, OK? So that I can actually solve. If I'm starting with ounces, I want to make sure that ounces cancel. If I start with liters, the liters need to cancel, just like what we were introduced, OK? All right, so for today, what I want you guys to do is to start on the activity. I'm going to give you tomorrow to finish, OK? So I will change the due date. It's not due today. But at least now you guys have a pretty good foundation on sig figs. You have a great foundation with doing conversions, OK? So continue to go through these. Give it a try. If you get stumped, set it down. Come back to it a little bit later. OK, so you will have tomorrow at home to work on that. OK? All righty, friends, you are good to go. All right, so if I wanted to take something like 80 miles per hour and convert that to feet per hour, if you look, I'm going to start out with what I'm given, so the 80 miles per hour. And I want to make sure that I am canceling out my units by putting one in the numerator, one in the denominator. So here, if I'm going for, again, those miles per hour to feet, my miles need to cancel out. So I'm going to use a known conversion factor that 5,288 feet are equivalent to one mile. Remember then, I multiply straight across the top, divided it by everything on the bottom, multiply it across. I would suggest, again, doing this in parentheses so that when you multiply it, you're getting everything correct. And then make sure to consider, well, I started with 80 miles. How many sig figs should I start using? You guys are going to be responsible for using the correct number of sig figs as we continue to move throughout the rest of the semester. Okay? So there's a couple extra practice problems here. Again, go ahead and give the practice a try for tomorrow, and we'll see kind of how you're doing. Okay? All right. You guys have a great rest of your day.